Hey, what's going on guys? Good morning. Well, hey, today we're going to be sharpening some lawnmower blades and giving you guys some quick tips about how to do it correctly. I'm getting a lot of questions out there lately about how to use a blade grinder and how to make sure you have a perfect edge the whole way down. And a couple extra tips that I want to give you, just really nitty gritty, in the thick of it, some very meat type content to help you guys with sharpening lawnmower blades and getting that best perfect cut out there with your lawnmower blades. By the way, over here at the storage lockers this morning, the guys will be here in just a quick second. They're gonna be loading up. So I'm gonna help those guys change the blades out on the mower. We change our blades out about every other day or so to keep them sharp and to keep that grass cutting as nice as possible. While we're here this morning, and I'm showing you guys how we use the RBG 712, the rotary blade grinder, I wanna talk about our Honda generator in the Ryobi generator. We actually ended up picking up another generator, the Honda, more on this whole topic in a minute. By the way, one of the questions that we get the most on the YouTube channel are how do we change our lawnmower blades with any of our zero turns or the stand down? Well, this is the Ballard Super Jack. And I plug it just because there's always new people watching the channel. There's always new people that are learning how to change lawnmower blades, sharpen lawnmower blades. Uh, this can actually work on a variety of pieces of equipment like lawn tractors, zero turns, stand downs. It's like 200 bucks, 250 bucks for the jack. I forget what I paid for it back in the day. It's been about three years. There's actually a version two now, but you guys can get these at ballard-inc.com and then we have a Brian's 10 code that saves 10% and we earn a little kickback with that. So thanks for the support. Uh, we do use the Milwaukee Mid Torque half inch pin detent. This is the question I also get the most with changing lawnmower blades. What impact do we use? This is the mid tier one like I was talking about. This was not a uh, very cheap tool. This was like three or 400 bucks back when we got this. And uh, we've actually given a couple of these away on the YouTube channel over the years. That's how much I love them and believe in them. So we always use the second setting uh, with the light. Uh, it's not really to torque spec, but nonetheless, uh, we just knock it in there until we get a couple clinks. So you guys know how it goes. And uh, it can change these blades out pretty quickly. So invest into a Ballard Jack and a Milwaukee Impact, no matter what piece of equipment you have. It'll save you so much time and frustration and uh, save your knuckles too from when you're using wrenches like I did for well over a decade. All right, well the guys are off to the races. Let's sharpen some lawnmower blades. All right guys, so we're gonna sharpen some lawnmower blades together, but one thing I wanted to just maybe dispel a couple myths or help some of you guys that might have bought a RBG 712 or maybe a different blade grinder is, when we're talking about sharpening our lawnmower blades here, uh, it's not just a little put it in the cradle, pull it out, put it in the cradle, pull back, and just kind of grind these things out. It does take a little bit of skill, a little bit of finesse, and I don't think I've really covered that specifically on the last couple of videos that we've shot. Really, they've just been videos about the RBG 712, a, uh, a smoother, quicker, faster, easier way to sharpen a lawnmower blade, and just some quick tips, some quick how-tos. But I wanted to really show you guys how we specifically sharpen our lawnmower blade. And so here's what I wanna just do for a couple quick minutes. We're gonna sharpen some lawnmower blades together, and then I wanna show you the couple different techniques I use to make sure that we can get this perfect edge the whole way down. quick we just got done sharpening our first lawnmower blade now I'm gonna show some close-ups here in just a second because just because you see the shiny metal it doesn't mean that we totally sharpen the lawnmower blade right all we've done is expose some fresh metal part of that grinding wheel being able to take off some of the surface metal right now that being said if I show you guys some close-ups here you can see that this blade is actually nicked up quite a bit from the you know different things that we hit while mowing grass, from rocks to uh, maybe little stones to anything else in the lawn that might just uh, you know create some gouges on the lawnmower blade. Plus, it's not super sharp. I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's a little dull on the last little millimeter here of the lawnmower blade. So what I want to do is take us back to the RBG 712 wheel and show you guys how we actually turn the blade into that orange disc 
And then number two, how we're actually able to clean up the whole edge of the blade to get that smooth samurai sword kind of finish the whole way through. And then also tip number three, how we clean up the back side of the blade. Let me show you guys these three quick techniques right here, right now. All right guys, so let's talk about those three quick tips here. Number one, we wanna talk about cleaning up the surface of the blade. Number two, how we get rid of those nicks. And then number three, how we clean up the back side of the lawnmower blade. Now, as you guys would imagine, you can freehand with an angle grinder. I'd love to hear down in the comments, do you guys have a big fancy jig like the RBG 712? Or do you guys use an angle grinder to clean up your blades? Leave me a comment down below, would you? Uh, also, if you guys wouldn't mind thumbs up in the video, that really helps out the video, really helps us out. We appreciate that. Now, here's the deal. With an RBG blade grinder like this, we have these awesome uh, blade guides where all we have to do is set it in the cradle and pull it all the way through. Set it in the cradle and pull it all the way through. You guys just saw me do a clip of that uh, just a second ago. Now, here's the deal. It doesn't mean that you're gonna get a perfect edge, though, the whole way down, because every blade is different. This is usually set at about a 30 degree angle. Some lawnmower blades are cut at 30, some are 28, some are 32, some are 45. So it really just depends how your blade is going to sit in this cradle. And that also gets me to point number one. When we're cleaning up the blade, whether it's with an angle grinder or a bench grinder or a belt grinder, you might only take 80% of the material off on this cutting edge. So you might have a little bit of uh, surface material left on the top. You might have a little surface material left at the tip. The idea though is to get 85, 90% cleaned up on that first pass. And so when we're using an angle grinder, one of the reasons angle grinders are so difficult to use sharpening blades and you just kind of mess up the angle is that you're really taking off you know, a small strip, another small strip, another small strip, and you have seven or eight different bevels on this blade. So yes, it might be a 30 or 32 degree angle, but you have, you know, seven different layers of that. And it's like just making different passes on like a, uh, like an onion or a potato when you're slicing it down, right? So the idea with the RBG 712 and other uh, jigs like this, uh, the All-American Sharpener, for example, you can just make those clean passes the whole way through. But what happens when you have a little bit of surface material left on the top or a little surface material left on the tip? And maybe it doesn't grind all the way down to the bottom. Well, that's tip number one is that sometimes we'll ride this jig, get 80 to 90% on our passes, but then I'll hold it up a little bit and we'll flick it in. We'll flick it in to make sure that we're getting that last millimeter or so on the cutting edge all the way down to a sharp edge. Now, some guys will argue, and I'm sure somebody wants to leave a comment down below, that's fine, that you don't want a perfectly sharp edge. You want kind of a, I don't know, what do they say guys, like a millimeter kind of a dulled edge. I know some guys will actually take a file and finish it all off with just a, a dull, dulling of the edge, which it's just kind of funny how we're always talking about sharpening lawnmower blades, but nonetheless, uh, are we trying to get it to a perfect razor sharp edge? No, not necessarily. Uh, but some guys, you know, sharpen all the way to a razor sharp edge, like a knife or a blade. And uh, that's what we do with ours, by the way. So let's change it up really quick here. Let's talk about how do you get the nicks off of the lawnmower blade. Now, for us, same thing. You can use an angle grinder and you can freehand it uh, and just kind of round those out or use the backside to kind of round them out. What I like to do is actually same thing. I ride the top last, you know, centimeter of our wheel, for example. And again, I'm flicking this into it. So I'm not using the jig, I'm not using the cradle part here. I'm actually flicking this in to the top part of the lawnmower blade and the top last you know, half inch of the wheel. And I'm grinding this out to give me the perfect edge and clean up those edges, okay? If that makes some sense there. So as this is going through, I'm not just keeping it all the way down in the cradle, hoping that the, the edge is getting cleaned up with the middle of the wheel. I'm taking it all the way to the top and flicking it in to get that last millimeter like I was just talking about. All right, number two, you can always take the last half inch or so of this blade and you can clean it up this way by rotating your lawnmower blade this is something that we do. Now we don't want to round this into a, a swooping edge. That's not the goal of sharpening your lawnmower blades. We want to keep this as squared off as possible, but we are able to touch this up by just keeping the blade flat on this material. You can see all the scrapes that we've had. We can keep this flat on the top and just round out this last 12 inches because where's our, most of our nicks and dings coming from? You can even see in this blade. So we're just taking our lawnmower blade, we're rounding it out, we're rounding it out once or twice, and that's all we need to do. So. Number three, we're talking about cleaning up the backside of the lawnmower blade. You know, this is going to get us all the way down to one side, right? It's going to get us all the way to that cutting edge on the front, 
but there's still gonna be some nicks and we wanna clean this up on the back side or maybe we've sharpened too much on the front and so the blade's kind of uh, dipping down or waving down. Maybe you guys have seen that before. If you have an angle grinder, you can always flip your blade around on the vise and you can always clean this up by making one or two passes. Well, let's show how we do it with a bench grinder or a belt grinder. Very similarly, you guys can see that we have this cradle on the other side and all we're doing is just popping it in there and flicking it in flicking it in to just clean up a couple passes on this back side. Now we don't want to have the blade over time one side look like this and one side look like that. We want to keep one side flat and the other side contouring down. All right so we don't want to do this over time. We want to make sure it looks like this. One side is flat and we're getting that 30 degree angle. So tip number three, after we do four or five passes here, we flick the top part in, we round out our lawnmower blade, maybe fix some nicks. I'm always doing one or two passes on the back side to clean up any kind of bowing or any kind of, uh, you know, when the blade melts down and kind of um, rolls down. We don't want to have the blade drooping. So we want to, that way we can get the most even cut possible. We want to make sure we do just a couple quick passes on the back side. And that way this is flat, our, all of our nicks are gone. And then we also have a beautiful flat cutting edge the whole way down. All right, a lot of talk in here. Let me show you guys another example. Let me show you guys it in practice and we'll do a blade together. How about that? So as you guys can see, this blade looks phenomenally better, right? And we have a smooth cutting edge the whole way down. Now, just to recap, we made a couple passes with the disc. We had a couple spots here that weren't totally getting into the blade uh, or into the uh, grinding disc. So we had to flick it in, right? And as we flicked it in, we were able to get that last little mill millimeter. You guys might have even been able to see on that video if you guys click back. Uh, we had about 95% of the surface material cleaned up the first pass, right? But then we had a one little millimeter here at the end where I flicked it through just to get that final edge. Now again, what we don't want to have is just a, a sharp angle and then a dip off, right? We don't want to just grind that last edge out. Uh, I've, you know, destroyed tons and tons of lawnmower blades over the years with all types of techniques. What we want to do is keep that 30 degree angle the whole way down and then just use that last little millimeter if our blade isn't fully going all the way down in the cradle on the cutting disc or on this uh, grinding disc, right? And then you guys also saw on the back side, we wanted to clean up this as well. We had some uh, burrs, we had some, uh, some small nicks and some dings. So all we had to do was one or two quick passes here and we were able to clean those up. And all we had to really do was just put it in the cradle reverse and just kind of flick it back. It was pretty straightforward, nothing crazy. And then we had one or two small nicks as we were able to, same thing, just use that top last millimeter of the wheel, that top last millimeter of the wheel, and or even grind it out here, grind it out here, and just kind of flick those up and clean those out. All right guys, well hopefully you enjoyed those couple quick tips. I want to talk about the Honda generator and the Ryobi generator here in just for a hot minute and then we'll wrap this thing up. Uh, one other quick thing, do not forget to get a blade balancing cone. I'll leave a little link in the description down below. These things are like seven bucks. You can get them on Amazon Prime. Basically just stick the lawnmower blade on top It'll balance it out and you can know whether or not to remove a little bit more material, more material on either side of the lawnmower blade. But you know what? Balancing your blades, super important. Now, even with the commercial mowers, I know they can handle a little bit of uh, being an offset. 
but you don't want to be running your equipment like that long term. So make sure you balance your lawnmower blades. Get a little $7 cone here. If you want to get the $100, you know, Oregon jig that, you know, mounts to the wall and has a little blade bend tool to make sure that your blade is not bent, that's awesome as well. Those are like 90 bucks. Uh, this little $7 guy does the trick just as well. Let me show you guys those Honda generators and the Ryobi generators really quick, and then we'll button this thing up. The reason I wanted to cover this really quick in the blade grinding video, just a couple quick tips here is a lot of you guys know that we've been on the hunt to find a generator that can help power the RBG 712. So let me start really quick here with the Ryobi. Uh, and you guys can see 1800 running watts, 2300 starting watts. Very, very similarly here to the Honda. Now, that being said, love Ryobi. We get some Ryobi tools back at home. They make good product. I just feel that this is a little exaggerating on these numbers because we are not being able to get the juice out of it that we need to power the RBG 712. So this has been a fun unit. Uh, however, it just does not keep the charge and it does not keep the juice flowing when the RBG starts up and it peaks at the beginning. I've been able to kind of flick it on, start it off, flick it on, start it off, flick it on, start it off for the RBG 712 to cycle through the peaking of this thing. Um, so I'm not super impressed. Uh, I shouldn't have to do that with these kind of stats that it's saying that it's putting out. Does that make sense? Now, that being said, for 750 bucks, it's not a bad little home generator if you need to power an appliance or two. Uh, so long story short, I did request a refund and Ryobi did pull through uh, with a refund on this machine and I'm more than likely going to just gift this away at one of our live events here this November That being said that takes me to the Honda This unit was actually out of stock for several weeks. I'm telling you what across the country I could not get my hands on one and so any which way very similar stats I think it's 1800 running watts and 2200 peak watts but you know what? It actually pulls through it actually delivers on those numbers because this thing will not bog down uh, when I start up the RBG 712 it will uh, peak and then you'll hear the engine rev and it keeps up It doesn't trip. It doesn't shut down. It doesn't overload and shut off So if you guys are looking to get a you know small generator to power in your storage locker or your shed or Your garage or you just want something for your home appliances. I've got no skin in the game We've taken no checks from either of these guys um, nothing here sponsored by any way shape or form. We bought both of these. This was about uh, $1,200. This one was $750. So stat wise, they're very similar, but I'll just tell you guys straight up the Honda is the way to go. Uh, quick little choke feature here, quick little start, couple pulls, it's off to the races. When it's running, you'll get the little green light here. When we start it up, there will be a red light for like a quick overload. But other than that, this thing has been awesome, constant power to power something really beefy like the RBG 712. All right, guys, well, that's what we got on today's video. If this was helpful in any way, shape, or form, big thumbs up. We super appreciate the support. Also, if you guys are new to the channel, we're all about helping you guys grow more successful lawn and landscaping businesses so you guys can go out there and crush it. We do a bunch of how-tos and daily vlogs and equipment review videos just like this, so maybe consider hitting that subscribe button and joining in on the adventure. All right, guys, well, over and out from my storage locker, I will catch up with you guys here on the next one.